Good morning. Blessed Easter Monday morning to you. Uh, my name's Pastor Lori Kohansky, and I am an assistant to the bishop in the Upstate New York Synod. And I come to you live from my kitchen, my kitchen table this morning. It feels like a kitchen table day for me. It's kind of dreary outside. I don't know if the rain has started yet, but I think it's going to. I'm so glad to be with you this morning, this uh, holy morning, just as holy as yesterday morning, as all mornings are for me. Um, but I have to say, there's one thing that I, I, I'm not doing this morning that I've been doing for the past 10 days, and it has nothing to do with preparing for Easter or working on bulletins or anything else. It has everything to do with this, this empty bowl. Um, for the past 10 days, I have been working on um, a starter, uh, a sweet starter for some bread that I wanted to make. Uh, about 10 days ago, I got out one of my favorite trusty uh, books. It's called Loaves of Fun, A History of Bread with Activities and Recipes from Around the World. I'll put it in the comments later. Um, I, it's one of my fun books to go to. Uh, it's meant for kids, maybe that's why I like it. It's so easy to understand, has some interesting facts uh, and some pretty good recipes. I like their pretzel recipe, but this time I, I was working on the Amish um, Friendship Bread Starter. And uh, if you've used those before, it's a pretty large starter and, and the friendship part comes with sharing it afterwards. Uh, but you, you put only three ingredients in this bowl on, on, on the first day. Um, a cup of flour, uh, a cup of sugar, and a cup of milk. So that's it. Just those, those three things to start the bread. And the idea is to get it to come alive. You want it to come alive and see the bubbles. A lot of you know this already because I've noticed that a lot of us are making bread at this time. Uh, but this one uh, was, was new for me to make and so um, I, I put those three things in this pink bowl. Now it had to be a plastic bowl and you must never use anything but a wooden spoon. The scientists among us will know why. I just listened to the directions. But the most fascinating thing about this recipe for me is that each day there's a task involved. But most of the days the task is do nothing. It's fascinating to me. Do nothing. Day one, do nothing. Do, day two, do nothing. Then I got excited. Day three, I had to do something. You had to stir it. And then four, five, nothing. Six, you get to add some more milk, sugar, flour. But then you do nothing, and then you stir it, and then you do nothing. Doing nothing was just really really seemed against and I was so tempted to do something because it, it forms this as my husband said looks like green this this layer on the top and you want to do something but you're supposed to do nothing and it was really hard to do nothing how could that be possible uh, and yet yesterday Easter morning I was very excited it was day 10 I timed it just right um, so I added more milk more sugar more flour and then I got to do something I got to bake something but before that I had to put it into bags so that maybe some lucky viewer will get one of the friendship starters if you'd like it they're in my freezer for now uh, and then I got to do something I got to bake this bread and then I got to eat the bread and I got to enjoy it and I get to share this starter with someone else but for me, it was the act of doing nothing that really just caught my attention. Um, for me, uh, it's sometimes hard to do nothing. I don't know about you. Uh, I tend to fill my days with stuff, whether it's scrolling through the internet, social media, um, whether it's reading, which is good stuff. I mean, it's not all bad stuff. Eating, oh, that's maybe bad. Too much snacking on probably breaded sweets like this. but. Um, doing nothing becomes really challenging for me sometimes. Um, and yet, uh, isn't that what grace is about? So it got me thinking this morning when I woke up, um, thinking about what I was going to talk with all of you about today, about the fact that doing nothing is exactly what we are sometimes called to be about. 
on this holy Monday, often when I was in the parish, I would take this day as a do-nothing day, as a day to sit and to re revel or to, to nap and to rest um, because of the work of the holy time. And doing nothing always felt luxurious, but sometimes a little guilt-inducing. Uh, what we do to ourselves when we um, give ourselves space is we fill that space with those thoughts rehearsing the future, rehearsing what other people might be saying instead of actually being present. But that is what grace is. Do nothing. My favorite uh, definition of grace by a, a modern writer is from Anne Lamott. Maybe you've read some of her books. If you haven't, um, perhaps on your next Do Nothing Day, look her up. Uh, she has some really interesting insights about God and the world and how to be and to be present. She says that grace, uh, her definition is this, I do not understand the mystery of grace. So it's not really defining grace, but trying to understand the mystery of it. I do not understand the mystery of grace, only that it meets us where we are, right here, and does not leave us where it found us. It meets us where we are and does not leave us where it found us. And the mystery part is that often, always, actually, as Lutheran Christians, we name that there is no way to earn that grace, that it is a do-nothing equation. Sometimes, though, it's hard to see how the bubbles like will rise, how we will rise when we're doing seemingly nothing. And yet, today, that's my call to my soul. It seems to be my prayer is to figure out ways to do nothing and to be present. Because indeed, in the doing nothing with this bread, the bubbles began to rise. It came alive with not much of my own stuff. My only following that directive to be present to it, to listen and to pay attention and to, well, do nothing. I should have had someone keep track of how many times I said do nothing today because I know I said it a lot. I hope you heard it. I hope you heard it in your soul. Um, perhaps you also heard that sense of how in the doing nothing there is grace. I also he I hope you, you hear how it also reminds us and reckons us to this Easter season. How we are called on to not do anything or fix anything or even reveal anything, but to do nothing and to sit and to pay attention to what is being revealed in the now, in the present, in the stories of Jesus as they continue. I am so glad we are in this Easter season, this greening, this rising, this noticing of how God is indeed meeting us in the nothing or the seemingly nothing of one human being who died on a cross. So my prayer is that we can make this into a season of doing nothing but being everything, being everything we are called to be as neighbors so that we can do the neighbor justice work we're called to. And so uh, in the spirit of doing nothing and being present, um, I want to uh, read a poem of a breaking forth in the midst of, of doing nothing that reminds me that Jesus is at work greening and doing everything. So my blessing today comes from a poet um, who I love, Lucille Clifton. Um, she was born in Buffalo uh, and she lived some of her life in different places, but Buffalo was where she spent a lot of her young life and early um, work life of, of writing and studying. And it's called Spring Song. So may this spring song be a blessing for you today. The green of Jesus is breaking the ground and the sweet smell of Jesus is opening the house and the dance of Jesus music has hold of the air and the world is turning in the body of Jesus and the future is possible. Blessed be your day. I hope you find ways to rest in the doing nothing and know that something indeed is still stirring even then.